Hello, everybody. This is David Vallade with AltaVista Technology. And it's that time of year where we're doing 1099. So I thought I would do a quick little run through in Sage Intact of how we can get through year end happily and in one piece. So when it comes to 1099s, there's a lot of steps. I'll try to go lightly over them here. We always have more material over at altavistatech.com should you have more questions beyond what we cover in this video. So first thing I'm going to show is uh, when I'm doing 1099s, first thing I want to know is, did I get everybody? Do I have all the 1099 vendors correctly identified? So a few things uh, related to that here. Um, you can see my list of vendors. And if you haven't seen this already, but you have this area inside of Sage Intact, these are called views. So you can make a view to say which columns you see and even filter to see um, to only see certain vendors, as the case may be. I made one here, a view that is called 1099 vendors. So this is helpful to me. I can at a glance see all of my vendors and I'm showing the 1099 type and the box right there. So if I were to see this global properties, for example, that that's a 1099 DIV, if I didn't like that, I could hit edit on that vendor. I can go into the additional information. Sure enough, that's how they're set up. But I could click and I won't do it in this example, but I could change that and correct that um, vendor going forward. Um, we'll, we'll come back to that in a moment. So that's a good thing you could do. Um, how I did that, just a quick little example here. Since I've already made it, I'm going to hit this uh, Manage Views area and I'm going to click Edit. You could see that there's a Create New View, and it's five steps. The first step is you pick the columns. I picked some, one, some columns I like, like the Form 1099 boxes. That's a good one. I can pick the sequence here to say what kind of order do I want this all to be laid out in. Handy. And then I did filters. This is a little different here, but I, I set the box number equal, or the operator here is greater than or equal to one. So if I have a box number of one or higher, or then it will show up on my list. That works out great. And as you can see, it pulled in my data. I right, cancel there. So that's a good view. Um, you might want to um, maybe take the filter out and just see all your vendors. So you can evaluate it that way. Lots of good things there. I will say, as of this recording, we have a nice little feature at the top here, turn on list beta interface. So if you're watching this video from the future, this may be standard functionality, but this is technically called a beta as of this moment. I have the luxury of being able to hop on in here, and it's a similar idea um, where this is actually where you can add little filters up here. I can drag things around. Very fancy, very intuitive way of working with uh, the system. But what I've noticed, at least as of this recording, the views are separate. So if I made something in the one area, I'd have to make it over here in this beta list view. And you can see it's basically the same idea, although I did say uh, status equals active, one time use equals false. Uh, and then I could add here, um, I think I have a view already pre-built here. If I go over here, I can have my 1099 vendors like so. And if I look at the filters here, um, this one says status active, one time use vendors are false, and 1099 type is not blank. So this is just showing me the 1099 vendors. Looking at this again, that one time use vendor, maybe I don't want that. Maybe I'll take that part out and apply that. It's probably the same list in my demo company, but you can play with that. You can see um, how you can make changes. Same idea, just we want to be able to look over our vendors and make sure we have them tagged correctly. All right. With that in mind, I do see this dividend vendor. So let's say that that's wrong. Let's say, oh no, I classified that vendor as a 1099 uh, dividend. They should have been, oh, let's say non-employee compensation. So I can handle that. <clears throat> I'll click on the vendor name. Uh, and regardless of what view or what technique I can drill in, there's the um, same idea. I can see here that I have that vendor set up. I can go to additional information. I can see there, in fact, we do have the, um, the 1099 dividend. I'm going to edit that vendor. I have rights to do that. I'm going to click on my 1099 um, uh, box there, a little link, and I can see all those good 1099s and non-employee compensation is in my list. So I will pick that one. And then I would pick the box number that is relevant. And that looks like a good one here. And I'll hit save. That is good. And I'll hit save again. Now, this is interesting. Uh, this takes a moment to take a look at this, um, but this is a handy little uh, screen we have here. This says, hey, I'm just reading the screen that you see, what do you want to do with the history? Yes, we've updated this vendor going forward, but what about any transactions that came before? I could say, since I'm recording this in uh, early 2023, 
that I want to update uh, this year and uh, the prior year and go ahead and mark those transactions as actually 1099 NEC instead of whatever it was beforehand. Or go back to the beginning of time, depending on your use case, depending on what you want to do, um, you can pick whatever is appropriate here. I will, uh, maybe I'll say don't do anything. I could do that. <laughs> uh, that's fine. And I hit save. And then you can carry on. And uh, so in that example, what I just did is I changed that vendor going forward, but I left the history as is. Okay. So you can do that. If you look over your vendors and you see, oh, this one vendor has something that's not quite right. You can go in like I just did, make corrections and off we go. Uh, but let's say that, oh no, um, I have a whole range of vendors that was set up incorrectly for whatever reason. Maybe we set them up wrong initially. It could be any number of reasons, but let's say I want to correct a lot of things. Well, that's okay too. Uh, to do that, I want to go over to my company area and we have this import data menu. And all this good stuff, remember we can import into Sage Intact uh, to do all sorts of things. But you'll notice in particular here, of particular interest to us, is I can update our opening balances and our 1099 transactions. Opening balances, I probably won't show in this video, although we have some of this information on our website at altavistatech.com. Uh, but that's particularly useful like when you're starting out, it's your first year. If we want to have our opening balances for transactions that happened before we started doing our uh, transactions inside of Sage Intact, that's a great option. Uh, but this other one here, transaction update, and there's a template there. This is uh, one that you can use if you've been using Intact for any length of time, or if you have a lot of transactions that are in the system, and those are the ones that you want to recharacterize, this is the great option for you. What I would do for that is I would click the template, and I can download the template file. And I have that at the ready, which I'll drag right onto the screen here. Um, this might look a little busy. Um, but the whole point of this is that you can do an upload after the fact by filling in certain bits of information here, you can uh, update the system's history and make corrections. Now you might have to be an admin, you might have security to uh, be able to do this, but I can go back and pick a range or, or whatever I need to, to have to update. I'll drag this little reference in here too. This is something that we'll be doing, putting on our little write-ups. But um, just a quick glance, this is that same file laid out a little differently, but just explaining some sample data of what you could have. So for example, um, if I wanted to update, let's see here, this um, bottom transaction, uh, if I put in the vendor ID, maybe a vendor name, and then put in um, miscellaneous and box three, and yes, update all transactions for a date range. The little comment here, just like it sounds, updates the transactions that were originally marked as 1099able for that vendor. Very nice. That's a different sort of layout than if we wanted to say, let's update uh, update transactions for A to all the transactions, update everything to be a certain box. Like in this line here, um, for um, any ten, we're actually updating the name on the 1099 in addition to the box number, the form type, and all transactions, regardless of how they might have been classified originally. So you can do this um, after the year's over if you see something, if there's a lot of corrections you want to make. Now, if I just had one vendor, I could have done it by hand through that one the option we just saw, where I edited a vendor and then chose a different option on that pop-up. So depending on what you're after, know that you can do both. And everything I showed in that example, it is explained in the handy dandy little uh, reference here on the, the download on that template. But there's a lot here, I, I grant you. So uh, that's a little reference to help you along. So let's say you're with me so far. You've looked over your vendors, you agree that all the 1099 flags are as they should be. Now you've gone through and you, your beginning balances are there and you think you have all your transactions right, but you're not sure. What can we do now? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Uh, if I come over here into accounts payable, there is uh, a 1099 uh, option here. So I can, let me change my zoom here. I'm going to um, go to 1099 right here. And I'm gonna go to my 1099 report. Now, the first time you come in here, if you haven't seen this report, you do have to pick your form. Let's do an example here. I'm gonna pick, let's say 20, uh, 2022. Uh, you can do, <laughs> I just put the date range down below. I could have uh, 
picked a filter at the top. This is standard functionality that you see in Intact of how you uh, want to select your date. That's good. I'm going to do this for all vendors, all employees. And I've been in this form before because it says 1099 form type, and I have pre-selected the NEC and miscellaneous forms. I can hit edit to add to or subtract from that. If you've never been, this is a per user um, where it will remember your setting. If you've never been on this form before, or this rep report before, you do have to come in and pick something here or pick everything if you like, you can add all. And that way um, it'll remember that going forward, but then you can always change your mind, but you can see good information here. And then like the uh, this little selector would indicate, do we want to see everything that has been marked as 1099 or do I want to see everything because I want to kind of do some proofing and then detail or summary, obviously. So you can look at those selections, make sure it's something you like. And let's take a look at our report, see what we get. Okay, report runs. And I see a few things interesting. Let's see if I can uh, do my uh, little uh, pointer here. If I look at this record here, let's take a moment and see what we have. Looks like I ran this in detail. So I have this vendor 20011, and they've had two transactions, it would appear, one for $8,000, and that was marked as a 1099 NEC box one transaction. But then I have this other transaction here, non-1099 for 4,000 and change, that wasn't marked as a 1099 transaction. Okay, now that could be right, there could be reasons for that. But if I want to know more, I uh, love this, uh, these are all clickable links. So I can click on that dollar amount and I can see, sure enough, in June of that year, this was paid in full. I can see the check number drill in on it. And if I scroll down, I can see, yeah, this report is accurate. I do see that there's a line here. I see a dollar amount and it was not marked as a 1099 transaction. I'm going to pause here just to make a couple points. Um, if you don't see, if you're trying to follow along with your implementation environment and you don't see those 1099 boxes like I have on screen, it could be for a few reasons. One is uh, we can show details here and it might be lurking down below. So sometimes we have fields that we don't live in every day. We can drag them off to the side by editing this window. Um, so it may be there. But if not, if you don't see it there, uh, it is also possible that there's a checkbox in the AP configuration. Uh, it's a checkbox setting. You can turn it on to allow you to change 1099 uh, fields on a case-by-case -case basis. If you don't see it there, that may be something else to explore. You could always toggle it and toggle it back. It's a checkbox setting. And finally, you do have to have some um, the right security to get there too. But let's say you got here. Let's say you see that and you say, yes, in fact, I do see that transaction. Sure enough, that was put in as a non-1099 1099 transaction, but I've researched it. I believe that that should have been a 1099 transaction. Well, great. I'm going to hit edit here and I can reclassify that transaction. And remember, I could do that 1099 update to uh, that upload we had, but this is again me showing a case by case thing. If I see one transaction I want to look at, I can scroll in, I can see, and I can now toggle that and say, yeah, that should have been a 1099 transaction. And let me pick the correct form type in box. Okay. And if I do that, I'll hit post. And now the report has updated and everything is back to um, the way I'd expect. So you can take your time with this. You can export this to a file if you want to look at it that way. Uh, you play around and you can get this to be just the way you want. So eventually we get to a point where, yes, we've done it. We like our 1099 transactions. Okay. With that done, uh, a couple last points I'll make here. One is uh, then you can print your 1099 and 1096 form. Uh, so you can do that all right through the system. And off we go, you pick your year. You do have to pick which uh, form you want to print and off we go. Okay, I won't do that in this video just because we're running long, but um, you can do all your 1099s and your 1096 as you saw right through the system. Also, because uh, of where we are here, this is the first year where I was able to do this. I came into my configuration for accounts payable and I was able to scroll down to my 1099 settings and I can check this box that says enable 1099 e-filing powered by tax bandits. So 
Um, if you don't want to print the 1099s and you would instead like um, Tax Bandits, a marketplace partner, to do all of that for you, it's basically you pay for the amount of work you want them to do. So do you want them to actually print on paper and deliver to your vendors? Do you want them to just uh, submit that to the IRS and you'll do the paper part? Do you want them to do everything or just very little? It's it's kind of like you pick what you want it to do. There is a fee associated uh, that tax bandits will, will charge, not Intact, but tax bandits on behalf of Intact, where they will do, you you pay, you know, if you're sending paper, for example, you have to cover the cost of the stamp. So there is a, a fee for that, but if you don't want to actually um, handle the paper or, or even the, the filing to the government, uh, there's a way to do that. I'll just show here quickly what that would look like. So if I go over to my accounts payable area, I can go into this e-file submissions. If you don't see that, that might be that the checkbox was not enabled. So you'd have to do that. And also you'd have to, um, you might have security issues too again. So I can come in here, I see my tax year, and I don't see anything queued up to go. But if I hit my add button, I'll say 2022, sure. Let me just pick one entity out of many. And uh, 1099 dividend, sure. I'll do an NEC, that sounds good. And if I click e-file here, I will see, ah, that's the, hey, that's the same vendor we had a second ago. That's looking great. I could download that. Or if I click e-file here, eventually I'm going to queue up a batch, submit this to Tax Bandits, and then finish the journey over there. So I would be in that other website to complete the, the drill to get this out to, um, up to the government and off to my vendors as well, if I want to do that. Boy, do we cover a lot. Uh, I can keep going. There's so much more here, but I uh, just wanted to kind of run through this at a high level. We do have more content on our website and you're always available to reach out to us if you need a hand. So altivistatech.com. David Vlade, glad to talk to you. Hope to uh, hope you get through year end in one piece and we'll talk to you more later. Thanks.